let us consider the microscopic features of spinal cord. I am grateful to Dr. Michael Hosch of University of Michigan Medical School for providing the images of histology sections. Spinal cord is a flattened cylindrical structure located in the vertebral canal. It extends from upper border of first cervical vertebra to the lower border of first lumbar vertebra in adults. Spinal cord is covered by three layers of meninges that is dura mater, arachnoid mater and pia mater from outside inwards. Its external surface shows various sulci. Anteriorly, the anterior median fissure separates the right and left halves of the spinal cord. Posteriorly, there is a shallow posterior median sulcus and dorsolateral sulci mark the site of entry of dorsal roots. Spinal cord has a butterfly shaped central grey matter surrounded by peripheral white matter. Right and left halves of the grey matter are connected by grey commissure traversed by the central canal. Central canal is lined by ependymal cells appearing as columnar ciliated epithelium or pseudo stratified columnar ciliated epithelium. On either side, the grey matter shows ventral horn and dorsal horn, while the white matter separates the ventral horn from the surface. Dorsal horn extends to the surface showing four distinct parts namely apex, head, neck and a base. In the thoracic segments, an additional intermediate horn of grey matter can also be seen on both sides where preganglionic sympathetic neurons are located. Grey matter consists of neuronal cell bodies their dendrites, beginning of their axons, termination of the axons in the descending tracts along with the neuroglial cells. Ventral horns show large multipolar neurons whose axons form the efferent ventral roots of the spinal nerves. Dorsal grey horn and grey commissure show relatively small sized neurons. And neurons having related functions are grouped together both in ventral and dorsal horns to form nuclei. Here, we are seeing a cell body or a pericarion of a neuron showing vesicular nucleus with prominent nucleolus. Cytoplasm is showing prominent nissel substance made of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Axon hilla with sparse nissel granules mark the site of beginning of the axon. We are also able to see a dendritic process at the opposite pole of the neuron. Peripheral white matter forms the dorsal column between posterior median sulcus and dorsolateral sulcus. Rest of the white matter forms the ventrolateral funiculus. Dorsal column contains fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. Ventrolateral funiculus contains ascending tracts like spinothalamic and spinocerebellar tracts and descending tracts like corticospinal, rubrospinal, vestibulospinal and olivospinal tracts. Here we are seeing the peripheral white matter showing sections of variably myelinated axons of both ascending and descending tracts interspersed with nuclei of these neuroglial cells. Although the general plan of butterfly shaped grey matter around the central canal surrounded by peripheral white matter remains the same throughout the length of spinal cord, there are few variations at different levels. Firstly, in case of Ascending tracts, nerve fibers are added at each succeeding segment, thus the fibers in the ascending tract keep increasing at higher levels. Similarly, fibers in the descending tract keep diminishing at lower levels as the number of fibers terminate at each segment. Thus the quantity of white matter is much more in cervical levels and keeps on decreasing in thoracic to lumbar to sacral levels. Secondly, the grey matter is much more in quantity in the especially in the ventral horn at cervicothoracic and lumbosacral enlargements where additional neurons cater to the limbs. In comparison, the upper cervical, thoracic and lower sacral segments show relatively lesser quantity of grey matter. Thirdly, due to the increase in the number of fibers in the dorsal column at higher levels, 
Central canal appears to be more posteriorly positioned in the sacral and lumbar segments and assumes a more anterior position in the cervical segments. And lastly, thoracic segments show the presence of intermediate horns. So based on these variations, we can roughly estimate the level of section of spinal cord. So the lowermost sacral segments have least gray matter and the least white matter. Segments in the lumbosacral enlargements show large amount of gray matter but relatively lesser amount of white matter. Thoracic segments show less amount of gray matter, relatively larger amount of white matter and presence of intermediate horn. Segments in the cervicothoracic enlargement show large volume of both gray and white matter, more anteriorly positioned central canal and presence of posterior intermediate sulcus which separates the fasciculus gracilis from cuneatus as shown by the arrows here. Upper 3 to 4 cervical segments have moderate amount of gray matter while showing maximum amount of white matter. So quickly recalling what we have seen so far, spinal cord shows central butterfly shaped gray matter traversed by central canal. Central canal is lined by ependymal cells. Gray matter contains neuronal cell bodies, dendrites, parts of the axons and neuroglial cells. Peripheral white matter shows variably myelinated fibers of both ascending and descending tracts and neuroglial cells. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video. You can also visit this site for similar histology videos.